السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا وقائدنا وقرة عيوننا سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم افتح علينا فتوح العارفين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا يا أرحم الراحمين يا رب العالمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن شاء الله Today, inshallah, we will start with uh, uh, Hadith 15, inshallah, and uh, uh, we'll read the Hadith, inshallah, in Arabic, and then give the translation. عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه قال من كان يؤمن بالله واليوم الآخر فليقل خيرا أو ليصمت ومن كان يؤمن بالله واليوم الآخر فليكرم جاره ومن كان يؤمن بالله واليوم الآخر فليكرم ضيفه So it is reported uh, on, the other, uh, on the authority of uh, Abu Huraira radiallahu an, that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said he who believes in Allah and the last day or the day of judgment should either utter good words or better keep silent. And he who believes in Allah and the last day should treat his neighbor with kindness. And he who believes in Allah and the last day should show hospitality to his guests. So in this hadith, there is an encouragement to honor one's neighbor, one's guest. Uh, it's also an ob uh, obligation to remain silent unless one has something good to say. And the fact is, all of these are part of faith. So the hadith clarifies the principles related to the tongue. This is the first point that the hadith mentions. فَلْيَقُلْ خَيْرٌ أَوْ لِيَصْمُتْ So the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, he who believes in Allah and the last day. What does this mean? Believing in Allah and the last day does not mean to say the shahada, to perform the, the prayers, to give the zakat, or and to perform the hajj if possible, if someone can afford it. It's not these only basic things. No, it has other deep meanings to some to, to some of which Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu has mentioned in this hadith. So everything that has been mentioned after the first nine words, he who believes in Allah and the last day, will have an effect. Uh, they, they will have an effect on us on the day of judgment, which is the last day. And that's why Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, says, he who believes in Allah and the last day. So Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, started with, he who believes in Allah and the day after should either utter good, good words or better keep silence. So it's known that you will remain safe as long as you are quiet. And if you spoke, it will either be written for you or against you. And for this, we have to scale our words before we say them. Are they going to be on the scale of our good deeds or of our bad deeds? Are we going to benefit from them or are they going to harm us? So the Prophet said, 
a man will say a word uh, without giving it any significance. And it will make him slip into hellfire as deep as the distance between the East and the West. Imagine just saying a word without, without giving it any significance, and that will, will do all that, all, all, all that, uh, uh, all, all the uh, hellfire space, all the, it, it will get a person to burn into hellfire. It's just a word. So utter good or remain silent. If, so, so, so your words should be sweet, should be soothing, should be comforting. Sometimes bad or harsh words hurt people more than hitting them with a hard stick. You know, physical, physical hurt can be healed. There's a bruise, it will go away. If there is uh, a bleeding, it will heal. But when bad words are said, First of all, they cannot be taken back, they are said, and the pain they cause is unhealable. These bad words keep hurting a person whenever they are remembered. So Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, emphasized on saying good words on being nice to people. And if we check the words of, the, uh, of, the, uh, of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we realize that his words are of simple expressions with comprehensive intelligence. And in Arabic, this is called Jawami'ul al-Kalim. What does this mean? When he speaks, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says just a few words, but the meaning is so great. A few words that has comprehensive meaning. So our words should be the same as Sayyidina Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, words. We speak when there is a need to speak. We speak, when we speak, when there is a need to speak, we say just good words. So once Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, was asked, who is the most excellent among the Muslims? And he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, one from whose tongue and hands the other Muslims are secure. من سلم الناس لسانه ويده. So this is the good person. In Hadith 12, which we discussed earlier, we, we've seen how Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, من حسن إسلام المرء تركه ما لا يعنيه. Part of the perfection of a person's Islam is He's leaving that which is of no concern to him. We shouldn't, we should mind our business. We should not get into things that are not of our concern. We should not say anything that has no value. We should not say anything that would hurt people. So, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is so careful about the relationship between people. So this was his word, how we should be. So always make sure to be silent when you are, when you are in a, a gathering and uh, so many people are saying so many different things. Do not get involved with just evil words, with evil talks, or uh, with nonsense. No. 
And always make sure to be silent when you are in the presence of the people of Allah, when you are in the presence of scholars, of shiuch, so you would learn from them. You would benefit from their words. Listen and reflect. Think of what they are saying. Try to get the, the noor of the, of, the, uh, of the blessed words they are saying. And if you want to say something, just let your tongue be fluent with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let your words be of good deeds only. And remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is overwatching you and is, is listening to you. Only if this happens, then you will, you will feel ashamed that Allah will listen to you saying bad words to others or hurting other people or speaking evil, backbiting or gossip. So always scale your words before saying them. And do not argue, especially if you know that you are not going to change your mind or the other person is not, is not going to change his mind. So don't let your words cause you sorrow on the day of judgment. Now, the second, the second point of this hadith is, uh, is that whoever believes in Allah on the last day, then he should honor his neighbor. Whether your neighbor is a Muslim or not a Muslim, you should be good to your neighbor. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, says, مَا زَالَ جِبْرِيلُ يُوصِيني بِالْجَارِ حَتَّى ظَنَمْتُ أَنَّهُ سَيُوَرِّثُهُ So Jibreel kept reminding me uh, and kept saying uh, words and uh, advices towards the neighbor so much that I thought if he would soon confer upon him the right of inheritance. So Jibreel was giving the, the uh, advice to Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, over and over to be good to the neighbor. And we have seen many stories telling us how, how nicely Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, dealt with his neighbors, especially the non-Muslims, uh, the non-Muslim ones. So we know the story of the neighbor, uh, non-Muslim, who used to put the trash at his door every night and one night. Um, and of course, all the time, Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, would clean it. And one night, he did not, he, there was no trash. So Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, went to his neighbor to check on him and he said, what's going on? And... Uh, he, the neighbor felt so ashamed of himself, how bad he is treating Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, and how good the Prophet has treated him. And that was the reason for his, uh, for embracing Islam. So be good to your neighbor. So the third, the third point is that uh, of, the, of this hadith is that whoever believes in Allah and the day after should honor his guest. So honoring the guest is showing hospitality to your guest. Uh, if uh, your guest arrived at uh, uh, meal times, then you don't you don't leave your guest to 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 go uh, without food. You should offer food. Uh, you should be uh, uh, you should show hospitality to your to your to your uh, uh, to your guest, and 
with so many stories of uh, people of Allah who even some of them were very poor and uh, one of the stories that um, one one family, the father and the mother and the, their kids, they were poor and they had just uh, a little bit of food for dinner and suddenly uh, one, uh, a guest came and it was the habit that food will be served. So the, the mom took her children and put them to sleep so they won't eat from the very little food that they have. And the father noticed what his wife did so he uh, turned off the lantern so that when the mom came, when the wife came with the food, the, the guest would not know that they are not eating, they are just hitting the spoons against the, the plate so he would imagine that everyone is eating honoring the guests, being good to the guests. So this was the, uh, uh, the, the Islamic manners that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wants us to, to follow. Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawmi al-akhir fal yaqul khayran aw liyasmud. Just say good words or be silent. وَمَنْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ فَلْيُكْرِمْ جَارَهِ So, be good to your neighbors. وَمَنْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ فَلْيُكْرِمْ ضَيْفَهِ So, just to honor your guests. And one of the people of Allah says, if Allah loves you, then he will, he will send guests to you. So that you would get the uh, blessings and the good deeds of showing hospitality to, to, to your guests. So be happy when you have guests. Just serve whatever you have. Just put everything that you might um, that's eatable to your to your guests, and do your best to honor your guests. The second, the, uh, the next hadith, uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه أن رجلا قال للنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أوصني قال لا تغضب فردد مرارا قال لا تغضب so these good manners, which we just saw in uh, the previous hadith, uh, continue in the next hadith. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Abu Huraira said, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, someone came to him and he said, uh, Oh, Messenger of Allah, advise me. Give me an advice. So advise me. And the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, do not get angry. And it was repeated, do not get angry several times. Do not get angry. Again, an amazing lesson in good manners. So we see here how the hadith started by Sayyidina Abu Huraira saying, Rajulan qala nabi Rajulan, there was someone who came to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and asked him for advice. So to each person, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to give an answer. And sometimes 
the answers would be different even the same question is asked. So Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, used to answer people regarding what is most suitable for them. Each one of us um, has developed certain characteristics. If anyone has an, a ba any bad manner, then he should change himself. And it's the same as having an empty cup. If you put an empty cup under the faucet, that's dripping one drop after one drop. So with time, the cup will be filled up. Now imagine that this cup is filled up with bad manners. Someone is practicing bad manners, so each bad manner fills up a drop in that cup. Now, one day, that person decided to take the advice of someone he trusts. What should he do? So the advisor tells him, stop practicing this bad manner and advises him to do certain, several steps, actually. The first one, to empty the cup, to clean the cup, to shine the cup, and to fill it up with good manners. And this can be applied to our heart. If our heart is filled up with bad manners, with the results of the bad manners, because each bad deed will have a black dot on our heart. And if we do not clean this black dot, then with time, the whole heart will be filled up with black dots and it will be black. So we have to empty our heart. We have to empty our heart from these bad, bad things that we practice. We have to clean our heart. And we clean our heart with istighfar. And we have to shine our heart. We shine our heart with sending salawat to Sayyidina Muhammad Wasallam. And then our heart will be ready to be full, filled up with good manners, with good deeds. So the light of these good manners and good deeds will lit the heart. The anger is a bad manner that we should always be away from. And when someone comes to Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, for an advice, this advice is not specifically for that person. We have to take, to take advantage of the answer. We have to, to fulfill the answer. We have to apply the, the advice of Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم. And uh, we know that uh, um, Anas Nunaik was the servant of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he said, I served the Prophet for 10 years. He, he never got angry or he never told me for something I did not do, why you did not do it. So Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, never got angry for worldly, trivial things. This is not done. Okay, khair. We will do it. We'll do it later. Don't get angry for no reasons or for silly reasons. If people's heart is set on the day after, then they will not get angry over pity issues. They, they will follow the steps of Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, as he never got angry for himself or for proving his point. The only time Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, would get angry would be upon seeing evil or if the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have been neglected or overpassed. 
And there was a narration that an unbeliever came to Sayyidina Abu Bakr in the presence of Prophet Muhammad And this man started to curse Sayyidina Abu Bakr and he said bad words to him. Sayyidina Abu Bakr did not answer him. And Prophet Muhammad was smiling. Then the man kept going on and on and on. And Sayyidina Abu Bakr wanted to stop him. So he started to speak back to, to the man. Suddenly, Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, frowned and he left. And Sayyidina Abu Bakr followed the messenger of Allah وسلم, and he said yeah, to him, O oh, Prophet of Allah, what, he was cursing me and you were smiling. The minute I started to reply to him, you frowned and you left. What's my life without you, Ya Rasulullah? And the Messenger of Allah said, when you were silent, the angels were answering him back. But when you started replying back, the angels left and the shaitan came and I don't stay in the same place with shaitan. So when you got angry, that was because of shaitan. You invited shaitan. Now, the, what is the advice of Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, to someone who gets angry? So, his advice is to change the position. So if someone, if, if someone gets angry while he is standing, then he should sit down. And if he is still angry, then he should lie down. He should say, A'udhu Billahi min shaitan rajim Then let him wear kudu. Why? Because anger is from shaitan, and shaitan is from fire. And what extinguishes fire is water. So making wudu will calm the angry person. So who is, who is uh, uh, what, what is the definition of being strong? Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, لَيْسَ الشَّدِيدُ بِالسُّرْعَةِ إِنَّمَا الشَّدِيدُ الَّذِي يَمْلِكُ نَفْسَهُ عِنْدَ الْغَضَبُ And this is narrated by Abu Huraira that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the strong man is not the one who is good at wrestling. Whenever he wrestles, he wins. That's not the strong man. The strong man is the one who controls himself in a fit or phrase. So this means that the strong man is the one of good manners. Uh, it is said that تجنب الحديث أثناء الغضب قد يكون كلامك صحيحا لكن حتما أسلوبك خاطئ Avoid talking while angry Your words might be right but your style is definitely wrong So just be careful and do not get angry do not get angry. This is the advice of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So if you feel there is something wrong with your personality and your manners, what should you do? Start with the beginning of the hadith. The man came to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So ask the people of Allah for guidance. Ask them for advice. Now moving to the next hadith عن أبي يعلى شداد بن أوس رضي الله عنه عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال إن الله كتب الإحسان على كل شيء فإذا قتلتم فأحسنوا القتلة وإذا ذبحتم فأحسنوا الذبحة وليحد أحدكم شفرته وليرح ذبيحته so Abu Yala bin Shaddad ibn Aus radiallahu anhu 
reported that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi said, uh, Verily, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has prescribed Ihsan, perfection, for everything. So when you kill, you must make the killing in the best manner. When you slaughter, make your slaughter in the best manner. Let one sharpen his knife and give ease to, to the animal he is slaughtering in order to reduce the pain. So, Ihsan, from the Sharia perspective, has already been discussed in previous hadiths, in hadith too, and uh, in other hadith. In this hadith, Ihsan, excellence or perfection, was ex exemplified in killing anything or slaughtering an animal. So, not only in killing or slaughtering, but in all aspects of our lives, we should have perfection. We should do our duties as perfectly as possible a teacher, a doctor, an engineer, a student, a lawyer, a mom, anyone in any position should have perfection in whatever they do. So in this hadith, the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala specified killing and slaughtering. And he specified that the one who is doing, uh, the one who is doing the killing or the slaughtering should sharpen his knife. So when you slaughter a sheep as a qurbani, you should give ease to the animal that you are slaughtering. And that will reduce the pain that the animal might be suffering. So be compassionate, be merciful to, to animals and on a larger scale to people. So there are the, the, these two, to be passionate and to be merciful, these are the greatest qualities that we should practice with the creatures of Allah. Again, everyone should keep remembering that Allah is overwatching and that Allah likes perfection. So we have to do all that we do as perfectly as possible. So this is the uh, uh, general idea of the hadith of Ihsan and perfection. Now moving to the last hadith that we will be covering today, inshallah, hadith number 18. An Abi Zarrin Jundub ibn Junada وأبي عبد الرحمن معاذ بن جبل رضي الله عنهما عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال اتق الله حيثما كنت وأتبع السيئة الحسنة تمحها وخالق الناس بخلق حسن So the messenger uh, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said and this is narrated by Abu Dhar radiallahu an and by Mu'az bin Jabal Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said fear Allah wherever you are wherever you are do good deeds after doing bad ones the former will wipe out the later. So the good deeds will wipe out the, the bad ones. And behave decently towards people. So the main idea of this hadith, it starts with taqwa, piety. So taqwa. There are three levels of taqwa. 
how we are with Allah, how we are with ourselves, and how we are with other people. So the hadith starts with fear Allah wherever you are, wherever. Whether you are with people or whether you are alone, fear Allah. And we have to, to be careful uh, and we have to make sure that we do in front of people what we do alone. We don't want, we, we don't want people to say, oh, he prolongs his salah. And when he prays alone, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. He's done. No. We should have taqwa wherever we are, whether in front of people or alone. Allah is always there. So we have to have good intentions. This is where taqwa starts, in the heart. So taqwa has meanings, many meanings. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned different meanings in the Quran. In Surah Al-Baqarah, in Ayah 281, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاتَّقُوا يَوْمًا تُرْجَعُونَ فِيهِ إِلَى اللَّهِ ثُمَّ تُوَفَّى كُلُّ نَفْسٍ مَا كَسَبَتْ وَهُمْ لَا يُظْلَمُونَ So the word taqwa here, the translation is, let me translate it, and fear a day. Fear a day. So taqwa here means fear. And fear a day when you will be returned to Allah. Then every soul will be compensated for what it earned. And that will not be treated unjustly. So the taqwa here, the meaning of the word taqwa here is to fear. In another uh, surah, in Surah Ali Imran, Ayah 102, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqu allaha haqqa tuqatih, wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. O oh, you who believe, fear Allah as he should be feared and do not expect as Muslims in submission to him. So, and do not die except as Muslims. So obedience and worship in Surah Ali Imran, this is the meaning of taqwa. Do not die except as Muslims. Ittaqullah, fear Allah, and do not die except as Muslims. So you have to practice obedience and you have to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Surah An-Nur, <clears throat> which is the uh, third meaning of taqwa, Surah An-Nur, Ayah 52, the meaning of taqwa here is purifying the heart from sins. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَن يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ وَيَخْشَ اللَّهَ وَيَتَّقْهِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْفَائِزُونَ And whoever obeys Allah and his messenger and fears Allah and, he, and is conscious of him, it is those who are the winners. So when you purify your heart from sins, you will be a winner in the day after. And this is taqwa. So the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was once giving a ceremony and he was talking about taqwa. And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam pointed to his blessed heart and he said, at taqwa ha huna. So, what does this mean? At-taqwa ha-huna, and he pointed to his heart. It means that all the taqwa is within the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So 
So how to gain this taqwa from Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? If taqwa, if all the taqwa is in his heart, so get your heart connected to his blessed heart. So to know what real taqwa is. When you do so, Allah will guide you by making you follow the footsteps of his Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is the first point of the hadith. The second point is, Do good deeds after doing bad ones. So the good deeds would wipe, will wipe the bad deeds. So if you commit a sin, uh, let's say by harming one of your brothers, what should you do? You should hasten to do good deed and to seek the, his forgiveness. Let's say you backbite at someone. Oh, this is big, big, a big sin. Then what should you do? You should speak good about that person who you backbited, and you should make a istighfar for that person. So this is if you commit a sin to people. Now, if you commit a sin against yourself by disobeying the law, then what should you do? Then hasten to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and increase in good deeds. So to wipe the bad, the sin that you have committed. Now you might say, okay, uh, are there any conditions for Tawbah to be accepted? Say, of course, yes. So the conditions of tawbah, of repentance, first one is to feel sorry that you disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Someone might say, okay, this is a small sin. It's not a big sin, just a small sin. I, I mean, I'm going to do it. And Always remember that it's not this how small the sin is, but remember who you disobeyed. You disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is it worth it? Is it is it worth the punishment that you would get in the day after? So the first condition is to feel sorry that you committed that sin. Then you have to do istighfar. Astaghfirullah, I seek forgiveness, Ya Allah. I'm sorry that I, I did that, that sin and I am asking you to forgive me, Ya Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, astajib lakum. Call me, ask me, make dua and I will answer your call. And we know that the best time that the dua will be answered is the, the uh, few minutes before the, the adhan of Fajr, before Fajr gets in. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends down closest to us and he says, is there someone who is repenting and I would accept the repentance? Is there someone who is asking for forgiveness and I will forgive him? Is there someone who is asking for so-and-so and I will give him so-and-so? So, if you want your, your toba, yeah, and if you want to be sure that your toba will be accepted, just do it before, before Fajr prayer. Of course, you can do it during the day. It, it's not uh, a must, but this is what Allah promised us. When he said, is there someone who is asking for forgiveness and I will forgive him? And the third condition for tawbah, for tawbah to be accepted is to make sure that you do not do that sin again. Sometimes people would say, okay, we do that and we promise ourselves not to do it, but we feel, we, we, we feel bad and we do it again. We feel so weak and we do it again. 
Just do the three conditions of Toba. Follow them. Feel sorry. Ask Allah for forgiveness. And make sure to promise Allah that you will not do it. And add one more thing. Make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make you steadfast and will make you away from whatever sin you are doing. The third point of the hadith is hasan, and behave decently towards people, which means have good manners. So you, you see how many hadith now of the of the 18 that we have covered, several hadith focus on good having good manners. So the Prophet said, the most complete of believers are the best ones in manners. And the Prophet also said, should I not inform you of the most beloved of you to Allah and the closest of you to me on the day of judgment? And the Sahaba were so excited and they said, yes, Ya Rasulullah, please do. So Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, said, the best of you in manners. And once Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, was talking with Abu Huraira عن, and he said to him, You have to have good manners. And Sayyidina Abu Huraira said, What is good manners, Ya Rasulullah? So you would give those who deprive you, you should forgive those who mistreat you, and you should get connect to those who cut you off. Have good manners. Some people say, oh, but that's, that's difficult. Of course, you think that uh, easy, always you will have easy things? No. I didn't get that. Could you try again? So, uh, sorry for that. So what the, the, there is a saying that Paradise is like a bride. And the dowry of that bride is so expensive. So we should practice these expensive things, these difficult things, so to get into paradise. Again, Abu Hurairah once uh, uh, said, that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, قَالَ أَتَدْرُونَ مَنِ الْمُفْلِسِ Do you know who is the bankrupt? This is what the Messenger of Allah said, asked. قَالُوا الْمُفْلِسُ فِينَا مَنْ لَا دِرْهَمَ لَهُ وَلَا مَتَعَ So the companions answered, uh, the bankrupt among us is the one who has neither money with him nor any property. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إن المفلس من أمتي يأتي يوم القيامة بصلاة وصيام وزكاة ويأتي وقد شتم هذا وقذف هذا وأكل مال هذا وسفك دم هذا وضرب هذا. So Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, answered the question that he asked and he said, the real bankrupt of my ummah would be he who would come on the day of resurrection, on the day of judgment, performed salah, uh, uh, performed siyam, charity, zakah, sadaqah, everything. But he will find himself bankrupt on that day as he has extinguished, exhausted, he has exhausted all his good deeds. 
So he comes with with all the worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but he finds no reward for him. Why? Wayati. So he he revealed others. He brought calmly against others and lawfully devoured the wealth of people, shed the blood of others, beat others. So what happens? أخذ من خطاياهم فطرحت عليه ثم طرح في النار. So what happens? His good deeds would be credited to the account of those people who suffered his bad deeds. So if his good deeds fall short, when they when when his when his uh, good deeds are all gone, are all given to other people, then what happens? Their sins would be entered on his account, in his account, he, so he will have no, no good deeds, but he will have the bad deeds of those people, and he would be thrown in hellfire. So, خالق الناس بخلق حسن and uh, Imam Al-Qayyim Imam Ibn Al-Qayyim may Allah be pleased with him he said الدين هو الخلق religion is the good manners فمن زاد عليك في الخلق زاد عليك في الدين so whoever exceeds you in, in good manners, then he exceeds you in religion. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used always to make dua. Allahumma hdini li ahsani al akhlaq Ya Allah, guide me to the best of manners. Allahumma ahsan khalqi fahasin khuluqi. Ya Allah, you created me so perfectly, so let me have good manners. And we, we all, uh, as Surah Al-Ahzab, Ayah 21 says, وَلَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا So your Prophet, the Messenger of Allah, is your model. So just do as he does. He's making dua for that. Let's make dua for that. Allahumma hassin khulqana kama hassan ta khulqana ya arham rahimin. Allahumma hdina li ahsan al akhlaq. Oh Allah, guide us to the best of manners. If you do, if, uh, then we will be lucky. Fa innahu la yahdi li ahsaniha illa ant. No one would guide us to the best of manners except you, ya Allah. So we ask. Allah's guidance and we ask him to make us of those whom he is pleased with and we say Ya Rabbana Laka alhamdu wa shukru wa ni'mata wa rida Ya Rabbana Laka alhamdu kama yambaghi li jalali wajhika wa azimi sultanik and until we meet next week I would like uh, to leave you with by sending your best salam and my best salam and best salawat to our beloved Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh